So in the previous sessions, we learned about the application context. And we said that this uh, interface in this class is responsible for everything about the uh, injection and the IOC container inside the spring. So the application context uh, was actually, if you remember, was had the responsibility of gathering all the bean definitions from all the sources of all the configurations. So we could configure it like with XML, with annotations, and with Java-based configuration, which we will, we will be seeing in the future episodes. So that is the application context. And now if you want to extend uh, the behavior of the application context, actually, as the Spring documentation states, you don't need to uh, override and extend the application context class itself. Uh, the application context provides a bunch of hooks and a bunch of callbacks that you can uh, hook yourself in and actually uh, be called in, in different circumstances and different places, and you can extend its behavior. W one of the most, or, or we could say the most uh, important thing that we could extend the application context behavior is an interface named uh, Bean Post Processor. So the Bean Post Processor, what it does is that if you implement it, uh, you could uh, actually provide a bunch of custom logic before and after each bean being uh, instantiated, configure configured, and initialized. So if we register a bean post processor to the application context, the application context will call our bean post processor for each and every bean definition <clears throat> before and after it's being initialized and configured and instantiated. So in order just to scratch the surface, because it's not that widely used and that widely needed for, for um, actually custom particular developer, so let's just, I, I just want to show you how the Spring works internally uh, and then show you one of the annotations that have been deprecated and show you how it works. So just to scratch the surface, let's just define a custom bean post processor. So let's say, uh, I don't know, we just want to log the beans before and after they, they are being initialized, log bean post processor. We have to implement the bean post processor interface. And here, we could implement these two functions. So these two functions, as you can see, this, this says that post process before initialization. And this one is post process after initialization. And both of them pass the bean object and also the name of the bean. So after the uh, application context instantiates the uh, bean classes, then it passes. If you, if you register a, a bean post processor, it will pass that bean object and its name to this function before being initialized and after being initialized. And, and then you can actually there uh, actually have custom logic here you, you know you you have to return an object you could reject you could return something else if, if you return the bean itself the that bean that have been passed to you nothing will happen actually but you could return something else or you could uh check the bean internally so let me first let me just here just for the sake of the example let's just return the bean because we don't want to uh change the behavior and we just want to have a print ln here that says uh, post process after initialization. And we just want to see that it will be called before and after each uh, bean being initialized. So now we have to actually register this as a post processor. And the way we do that, it, is simply by defining as a component. Now it will be uh, scanned, automatically scanned like the other components and it will be added 
Now, if I run it, you can see that uh, before actually car being instantiated. So this function, post process before and after, is being called for each uh, component. And that actually gives us uh, the opportunity to hook our uh, custom logic. Actually, the uh, spring itself has registered a bunch of bean post processors, like for example, the auto wiring. The auto wire annotation, the way that it works is that after being instantiated, there is a, uh, I think there is an auto wired, auto wired post processor, something like this. Uh, let's see, auto wire, yeah, auto wire annotation being post processor. So this one again, is implementing the uh, bean post processor. And it's actually its uh, responsibility is that it will look into your objects class. Let me show you here. So when, when, the, when the object is passed here, the auto wired bean post processor will look inside your object and will see the methods and uh, the fields that needs to be auto wired, that are annotated with auto wired annotation. And, it'll be, and it will actually find the beans and it will get, get, grab an instance and it will feed it. So as you can see, the, the spring itself uh, does a lot of things, you know, internally with this bean post processor. You know, the, the way that it works is very dependent on the bean post processor. We could uh, add bean post processors like we did here, but it is mainly used by those that write their own frameworks on top of a spring and trying to extend the spring's behavior and that is not what mostly we need you know th that is for framework authors so the, the reason that i wanted to share this post processor stuff was that there is this annotation named at required and this annotation is actually uh is for this annotation is for uh, deferring the responsibility of checking whether the setter methods have been called or not. Uh, as you remember, we had this uh, disadvantage of using setter methods injection points because if we forget to uh, call it, as you remember, if you forget to call it, the, the instance would be partially uh, wired and partially constructed. But if we ask for the dependencies in the constructor, actually the, the user of this class has to provide all the dependencies. So in order to overcome, let's, let's have this, for example, public void set engine and ask for an engine. And let's get rid of this constructor for the moment. Now we actually expect Let's say that we expect this setter method to be called. And if, if, if we forget to call it, our class actually won't operate. Let's say that we have a method inside the car that will work with an engine. And if it is null, it will just crash. So in order to be sure that this will be called by the framework or by, by us, and we don't forget to call it, there is this annotation named required that we can only put it on top of a setter method with a single parameter. We cannot put it on top of the field or constructor. And the name of the method will should be should be exactly set that set something. It, it cannot be arbitrary name. So it is like the property versus field. So when we have a field and we make it a private. And when we provide a setter for it with the name, with its name, we are actually uh, creating a, what they say as property. So here we, we are actually telling the spring that you should be careful and check whether this function have been called and whether a, a value have been passed to you. But uh, so, so if we run it, nothing will happen. You'll see nothing will happen, no exception. And the reason is that in order to, in order for at required to work, we should uh, register 
It's being post processor, like the one that we uh, created, like the AutoWire being post processor. Uh, there is a bean post processor for at required annotation, and it has been disabled after Spring 5.1. And it is because, as you can see, it, it is deprecated. You know, the line that you can see it is crossing the required. It says that it is deprecated uh, for actually the auto wired. A after Spring version 5, the auto wired has added the required attribute and as you remember we could set it to false or true and it, it is actually uh, deprecated uh, in favor of that so if you want to if we insist uh, in using this which is a bad idea because uh, we are deferring uh, the check of whether this function has been called to, to IOC container if we use this class outside the container actually it won't be checked whether it has been called or not so it, it is a bad idea and it's been deprecated. But if you see in, in some legacy code, or if you insist in using this, you have to register uh, a bean post processor, uh, which is capable of processing the ad required. And for that, we have a bunch of ways because we don't use the uh, XML configuration. We have to do it like so. For example, we could say that bi.register and the class that we have to register is required annotation bean post processor. And then we tell the dependency injection to scan the packages and then we call the refresh. Okay, so as you can see, this is deprecated like the annotation. Now, if we call it, you'll see that it fails this time and says that property engine is required for bean car. So it is actually seeing that it is not called by us, by, by the uh, IOC container. It should be called at configuration, exactly at the configuration time. So there are two or there are two ways for calling this. One is with uh, the XML configuration, with, which we don't use it. The other one is with the annotation configuration. So with annotation, the only thing that we have to do is to annotate it with add auto wire and tell it, tell the spring that you should call this function. Now, if we call it, if you run the application, because by annotating the function as auto wired, because it has been called, when the bean, uh, when the required post processor uh, processes this <clears throat> method and sees that it's been called, then it doesn't throw an exception. So, so as you can see, we could simply say that it is required true, which is uh, by default true after Spring 5, of course. And we could just get rid of that required. We don't need that. And I just wanted to mention the required annotation here and say that it is deprecated and show you how it works internally by registering a bean post processor that will be activated after the beans has been instantiated and all beans will be uh, fed, fed to this post processor and the post processor will detect whether it has been called or not.